Hey there, welcome to Let's Make Things in which I walk you through the process of making something. In this video, we're going to be making a dynamic door block. An AutoCAD that can be scaled, can be rotated, can be flipped. And in this video specifically, uh, we're going to get started on it. We're going to create the block. We're going to get it scaling. So let's go and get started. This is an example of the block that we're going to be creating. So you can see here, we can actually flip it. That's, whoops, double clicked. We can flip it, we can scale it, we can rotate it. And all of these things can be handled parametrically here in, uh, in the properties. So you can actually specify, I want this to be a 36 inch door. Uh, let's go and make a copy of it. And this door, I want to be a 28 inch door. I want it to be rotated 90 degrees. I want this one to be zero degrees. We can do some really cool things with this. Um, so that's the that's the gist of what we're going to do. And just to show you that we're going to be working from scratch, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. And I'm going to go ahead and make new blocks. Purge. Oh, goodness. Purge. Let's go ahead and get rid of all the blocks. Let's purge all so we don't have any blocks in our drawing. And let's go ahead and start from scratch. So I'm going to make a line. It's from the... Uh, from the drawing's origin, I'm going to draw it out. I live in the United States and doors are in inches in the United States. Everything's in inches in the United States. So let's go ahead and make a 28 inch door. I'm going to add another line here. It's 28 inches just for working geometry. You'll see why in just a moment. There we go. And now I'm going to add a circle, drop it in there, trim it up, get rid of that line. And we have ourselves a very, very, very basic door block. Now, one of the reasons why I drew it right here on the origin is because this is gonna save me a little bit of time in, in, in the next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert this into a block by making a selection and then typing block. And now we get to give it a name. So we're gonna call it door. And if you didn't draw it on this, the, with the origin of the drawing right here, you can actually pick the, uh, the, the origin for the base point of the block. And what this is going to be is it's going to be a handle that lets you drag it around. Like you, I, I think you saw me drag the, uh, maybe I didn't drag it around earlier. Um, but you, if you didn't draw it there, you can just go ahead and select that button and you click the base point wherever that is going to be. You'll notice that this, you, you then get dumped into the block editor. So we're gonna go ahead and add the scaling functionality in here. And what happens when you're scaling, uh, as with any parameter that you add to your drawing, uh, to your, your block rather, um, is it works in, in kind of two steps. You, you, add an, uh, you add a parameter and then you drive the parameter with an action. So in this case, let's go ahead and add a linear parameter. And it's going to go from there to there. It asks us how many grips we'd like. Do we want a grip on this side and on this side to be able to kind of drag it out? or do we just want one? And if it's just one, it actually defaults to the second click. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And you'll notice we have this little arrow here and we have our parameter. And now again, remember we haven't driven the parameter yet. We just added the parameter. So the parameter doesn't have any kind of action associated with it. So now what we need to do is we need to associate an action and we're going to add the scaling action. And you'll notice I'm doing all of this stuff in the block editor tab on the ribbon. So uh, let's go ahead and I selected scale and it wants us to select the parameter that we're going to be driving with. Um, and now it wants us to select the objects that are going to be scaled. So I'm just going to select everything. So now let's go ahead and save the block and close it. And you'll notice we have our little handle here that we can pull out and we can scale the thing. If you go over to properties, you'll notice it's called distance one and that's kind of sucks, right? That's a lousy name. So let's go ahead and change the name on that. Let's go to the block editor again select that block and we're going to select this parameter this distance parameter and go into the properties and we can actually just change the, the, the name of the property right here we'll call this width and there we go let's go ahead and save it close it and now we've got this option here and this parameter that we're driving is called width and we can specify that in here so we can say oh look it's a 28 inch door uh, and you'll notice again this base point that I was telling you about. This is a that's that point right there. So wherever wherever this point is, if we go ahead and open this up, let's say I move everything up, 
um, this point right here is going to be the base point of the of the block in the drawing. Just going to save it really quick, and I'll show you what I mean. You'll notice it appears over here. So if you want that to be on this point here, you need to make sure your geometry is located uh, at the point of origin for where you want it to be clickable. So let's go ahead and modify that. We'll just move this all back. In order to make sure that it's there, I'm just going to specify 0, 0 as the point that it's going to. We'll go ahead and save it, close it, and there we have it. So now you can say, well, I want two doors, and I want them both to be 36 inch doors. And in fact, now you have two 36 inch doors. So that is it for this video. In the next video, uh, we'll keep building the blocks functionality out by adding rotation functionality. So um, we're going to go ahead and add a parameter here that you can click and you can drag around. If you like what you saw and you want to see more of it, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'd like to give a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for helping me fund these videos. If you're, and if you're feeling particularly generous and inclined, I would suggest that you consider becoming one of my patrons. Um, and you can head over to patreon.com slash christianbuchert and sign up for that. And thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.